reviews. And that's why I give this jingoistic mess an 8 out of 10. That was a bit dodgy, wasn't it, Gaz? Wait, am I doing retro handhelds or retro dodo today? What's going on, everybody? I'm Stubbs, that's Damien, and this is RH Weekly. Now, before we get into today's number one thing, we have another guest this week. That's right. We have Jay to the Bell, developer for Fake 08, the Pico 8 fantasy console uh, emulator. Jay to the Bell, welcome, sir. Welcome back. Hey, thanks. Yeah, it's good to be back. Slightly different format this time. Right. Yeah, we're in this new kind of news segment. Last time we had you on with Thor, we did one of those longer podcasts and got in all sorts of shenanigans um, really thankful that you weren't scared off and you came back to hang out with us again. So, <laughs> we'll see if we can fix that this time. Yep. <laughs> well, uh, after tonight, we will never hear from you again. But no, we're gonna we're gonna dig into what uh, Fake 08 is all about uh, at the end. But first, uh, why don't you join us for some news segments? Let's talk about what's going on. Yeah, let's do it. All right, Damien, are you ready? Are you feeling? Are you feeling I, good tonight? I'm you, hyped. I'm pumped. Are you hyped? Let's do this. Come you on. You got a Steam Deck. I get heard. hype. Get, Play Game let's, Bowl. Let's or, do it. Or whatever. <laughs> let's do it. Yeah. I did get a Steam Deck. Uh, the my, the one my, terabyte my. SSD that I ordered to go, it won't be yeah. here for two weeks. So I'm not touching that thing until that shows up. I, I don't want to do the 64 for gigabyte. For two weeks. The 64 gigabyte experience is not happening. Stuff. You can't even boot the thing up <laughs> for one minute with a 64 gig distracted. and it's just not good enough I'll for you. I'll install something and then I'll have to do it again. Like, I got other stuff. I got picky, I got, picky. I got Ann Bernick products Come to review. On. I got I got other stuff to mess with. I'm one to talk, I know. All right, hey, let's get into today's number one thing. Guess what? The X18S from Pow Kitty is finally here. You love, you love it. We all, we uh, were ho-hum on the first one. Um... <laughs> The word this you one, and you love it's doing a lot of work today. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's uh, they added clickable L3 R3 in, the, in this black edition. It's I would call it like the you know the, the X18s version two. Uh, they've added I guess better buttons and D pad. Uh, has a G mapping. It support more mumble games, M bile games. Uh, it has an mumble NGC sim. Like what is that. an NGC simulator? GameCube it plays a uh, MacBook. That's, that's a good question. I I, I don't know what an NGC simulator is. X18s. Oh, it's called the X18s Ultra. Wow. Okay. In their own title of their own video, it says X18s Black version. In the promo of the video, it's called the X18s Ultra. This statement on the product page is a little bit concerning. It's just yeah. Thing. So so you don't typically see somebody ragging on their own product in a uh, in a release the day it comes out. The day but, of uh, the release. But they did put yeah they did put note due to the structural limitation of the X18s mold. So far, X18s bugs have been optimized to the maximum extent or to yeah to the maximum extent. The touch of the button is much better than before, but it can't be perfect. Please can't note be. that if you buy this product. Please accept its shortcomings. We will continue to do a good job in service and product development. Thank you for your support to Powkitty. Here's the X18S Ultra. Just ex- please accept its shortcomings. That's the Ultra part. This time you will not be disappointed. <laughs> I, I'm, Apparently you Pau will. Kitty, I'm sorry. You know, you know we rag on you guys sometimes. And we love so many of your products. I have at least four or five of your handhelds that I adore, including the the original X18S after I modded it extensively, mind you, to make it playable. Sold it, purchased it back. Purchased it back three, four times. Actually, Damien and I (laughs) sent it back a couple times. I had it for a little while. (laughs) You know, the sale price is $172.99. I'm betting that's going to go up probably to uh, maybe $190, $200 even, since it's the the Ultra. But this isn't a new version. We can't call this new version. Clickable L3 R3 is not enough, in my opinion. And saying, no. guess what? There's shortcomings. Don't show your hand there. On the other hand, I like this, and I prefer this to you sending out, uh, like, the RGB20S without the Wi-Fi. 
uh, the, just, there's no Wi-Fi chip inside it. So this upfront marketing and honesty, I do appreciate and a step in the right direction. Everything else, well, I bought it today, so we'll see. Yeah. It'll be here in a few well, weeks. Of course, right? Like we have so, to try, right? Like I have just, to try it. You have to try, but I think I think this disclaimer. If I'm going to translate it to real world situations, they're probably saying that, you know, like, hey, we added L3R3. Uh huh. You know, we changed the color. I mean, the L3R3 was like one of the biggest complaints. You know, the screen yeah. is probably the same, which isn't great. But, you know, honestly, no. the screen's the worst thing in the world. But it's the buttons are probably exactly the same, is probably what that's telling us. And, Pow Kid, if you're listening, like, I will for free help you write this stuff better. Like, it is not that big of a deal. Yeah, you, like, like, yeah, you've offered I, that. I would be more than happy to help you out because I want to see your stuff get sell and we are supporters your on your own sell price I, I want to like this thing really bad i love clamshells me too but yes that yeah I, the, their own off. disclaimer scares me away <laughs> just a little bit at 172 bucks it, i mean it was a hard pill for me to swallow today to even pull the trigger on that one i'm like oh man you know people are going to want to see this and somebody has to buy it to review it right somebody does how Kitty traditionally doesn't really send out review units, so that's not really an option, uh, except for maybe a couple YouTubers. But I'm going to see. Um, what does, beyond L3, R3, there's a new hand feel upgrade, so on the D-pad. What does that mean? What does new hand feel upgrade mean? Maybe they did improve the buttons. They probably put the tape under there for us. Six layers. Six to eight layers of scotch that's tape. Right, six to eight layers. <laughs> But, I mean, let's talk about the cool things, though. I mean, it is a clamshell. Uh, it's running Android. Uh, it has that T618 processor, the same as right. in... Uh, the Enbernic 505 is about to release as well. Yeah, It's about to release, uh, of course, the old X18S. Uh, it's a capable It's capable hardware. It even plays some 2D Switch games, believe it or not. So that's really cool. The ergonomics on this are going to be the same, which are not great. You know, you're going to have to really wrap your hands it's around this shell. this sucker. Um, the GPDXD line is is more comfy, I would say. But this is beyond pow more powerful than the XD and XD+. Plus. So, and the screen's pretty nice. You know it's going to get lineage. It already has it. I'm, I'm, I hope and I'm sure that there will be a version released for this. I'm guessing it's going to have to be different simply because there's some new inputs that Black Seraph is going to have to work on for those L3, R3. I'm mildly excited for this. You know, uh, it says the first batch of 200 units will be sold in Paukity.com. It will start to send parcels on October 18th. And AliExpress's temporary sales time is starting October 18th due to the platform's restriction on the delivery time of parcels. Oh, that's something that's actually a bit of honesty and transparency that you don't often see. You know what? This is cool. No one's talked about this. Look at that. So they're saying right there, this is why it's not on AliExpress yet. And they're saying, we're hey, not knocking there's actually... them for being distruthful. No. <laughs> Except on that Wi Fi thing. Yeah. And the the power bank V6 incident. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's old history. That one still that one still keeps me up at night, to be honest. A little bit. Alrighty. All right. So, anyways, if you want to buy it for now, buy it from uh Non affiliate link in our description. Uh, soon on October 18th, it will be on AliExpress. Let's get on to something even more important, though. Um, the RP3, important. everybody, is going to get a fantastic shell color this Christmas, but the Retroid is only making one color. So we have to painstakingly, as a community, join hands and pick clear blue as the winner. As you can see Obviously. here, it's at a 38% lead. Um, not that I ever condone voter fraud or manipulation or what have you, but clearly this is the better color. Let's explain why. Okay, listen. There is four colored buttons with the clear blue shell. Uh, it is the Baja Blast color from Taco Bell. Ooh. That's nostalgic. It has the uh, the the PAL SNES button colors. The purple doesn't. That's just boring. We already have black buttons in all of our other RP3s. Who wants another one? Clear black? Sure, that's going to match your Loki and your and your and your transparent black Odin. That's nice and everything. But we haven't had this color. Look at it up close. You know you want it. Um, so N64 had that same exact color. This purple, well, it kind of matches the N64 atomic purple look. It really doesn't um, because it doesn't have the fun face color buttons. If we could have the fun face color buttons, I'd be I'd be singing a different tune right now. But lastly, and this is most important, we've had too many purple devices this year. 
we've had. I mean, how many? How many Damien have we had? At least five or six. Uh, Stand eight bit two controller. What is going on? The eight bit do. Yep. Nope. It's 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 thing. Clear purple is old news. Like yes, it's it's rehashing the same thing. You know what doesn't come out all the time is clear blue. And that clear blue looks amazing. How many how many retro handhelds? I don't mean like original hardware, but I mean like you know our emulation handhelds come in this clear blue. What two? Well, yeah, got the, like nothing. The fun KS and fun the, the Wii U Mini. It's crazy. It. Now you can get your big one. Well, yeah. people are Number saying three, like make it clear blue. People are saying like, oh, it's gonna be teal. You know, it's gonna be teal, which is which is crap. And it's like, no, you know that render is wrong, and it's gonna be way more blue than it shows. Ocean blue. And it Ocean says Baja Blast blue. I believe in blue. Uh, vote your con- your conscience though. Whatever color you like the best, as long as you pick blue, you can continue on watching our show. Um, so as you can see here, I had a little bit of bias. Uh, you know what? It's the top comment, so we should follow its advice. Um, even JD says, yeah, clear blue and clear purple are both really good. He's wrong. Well, clear blue. Clear blue <laughs> is really good. I'm drunk if I purple is that. purple is for losers. Well, I wouldn't go that far, man. Purple's still a beautiful <laughs> color, and I, I bought my 353V in purple, and it's it's gonna be here soon. I'm excited for that. And I haven't I had an Odin in purple for a little while. It's a cool color, it's just that it's so 2022, you know. You know, going into 2023. J- Jade of the Bell, what do you think about all this? I'm I'm firmly in team blue as well. I like purple. I, I mean yeah. But the blue just looks better. And like you said, that's not as common. And if it ends up being teal, I'm okay on Team Teal also. I, I, there's I'm not okay enough either. teal handhelds out there for me. I, I really think there's not. Um, here's Damien Bright. Um, I know that guy. He says, imagine not voting blue. I know, right? But this Lux says purple all the way. Wrong. Thumbs down that comment. Oh, I'll, <laughs> that does something. I want thumbs down Lux, but <laughs> just kidding. You know oh. they missed they missed an opportunity to come out with yellow, a what? clear yellow color. Like I, they should. On. Victor Iamini says clear purple. Excuse me. Oh, and I already responded. Oh, Victor, Victor, you know I got love, but why are you choosing violence? Blue all the way. Oh, he says I'm willing to fight for clear purple. Let's do a handheld boxing match. You choose the time and place. NES is Punch Out or Wii Sports. I said, Bring you know it's got to be a vicious round leverage. of duck hunt. <laughs> Followed by Dr. Mario to medicate the sick burns you'll experience from not voting blue. And here's another reason why. Because Bell's Retro, okay, and the next item here, it makes these really, really sweet coffin cases for the RP3. Yeah, Go to bellsretro.com, link in our description for that one. Um, these things are freaking sweet. Open it up here. Just look at... Look at that. It's a nice setup. It's, it reminds me of the Miu Mini coffin case. Very sleek and soft padding and keeps it nice and safe. And it has the bump outs. This nice 3D printed shell. And there's different colors. You know what color? You know what color is an option? Clear blue. Is it blue? It's, it's blue. that light teal blue. He made this before he you knew. He, you notice he has a picture of the Miu Mini in clear blue right next to the cases there as well in that, in that other picture. Oh, imagine that next to that Retroid. God, he knew. Come on. And then this happened. And then Retroid said, "Hey, we're gonna make this. Yellow's great. All that. It'll match your your orange and yellow, and and the white will match white and all that stuff. But how are we gonna have this coffin case existing when we don't have a blue RP3 to match it? Okay. Go out and support Bells. He's an awesome dude. He also made uh, the RP2 Pocket Dock, RP2 and 2 Plus Pocket Dock, and that was a lot of fun. I don't know if he's selling that anymore. Here it is. If you want to consoleize your Retroid products and plug it into a TV, so it's really cool little thing. Yes, I've enjoyed mine, and I like my coffin case. Vote blue or vote purple. You know what? Just vote what you want. Don't let don't let us sway you again. You know. No, please do, and please vote blue. So, well, here's the <laughs> here's the last reason is that I'm I'm wearing blue to represent Retro Game Core, and also it's our logo color. So, like, a vote for blue is a is a vote for you. 
it pure really vote fan. For freedom. And freedom, that's right. Um, now, speaking of freedom, the 353V is free out into the land. It's on sale now. It's not in pre-order. And not just that, it is uh, landing on doorsteps. So people are starting to get their Vs, and they're really enjoying them. I've been loving mine. We have the full review on the way. Same. Um, Absolutely same. Yes. Loving check out thing. Check out our buddy Super Zoo on our channel. He did a review the other day. Um, Thor and I are working on a review. That'll be soon. But this has been my daily driver for such things as Pico 8. Really? So, yeah, it's just a cozy... To me, it replaces the Miu Mini because it's a little bit better size for my hands. Even with Are you playing Android, Android or, or Linux? Calling. I am a, I'm an Android. I'm an Android boy. So nice. I like to use Linux sometimes if I just want to turn it on and not think. So I always have the SD card kind of poking out a little bit if I want to launch Android. And you got to pop that in if you want to launch Linux. Um, you know, it's been a lot of fun. Damien, have you liked yours? I have. Uh, I've had a chance to play with the Linux side and the Android side just a little bit. There's I'm Jealous too, some, right? Uh, some, yeah, I was about to say, and that's the next thing. I'm going to put Jealous on there mm -hmm. and, uh, and let that roll because, you know me, I like Feud stuff. So. You do, yeah. Yeah, Feud's a good dude. All right, so pick that up uh, in uh, affiliate link in the description. Uh, so it's still, I think, for the money, a great deal. Uh, but there are a few annoyances and things, as there always are, and we'll go over that in a full review. Now, it completely blows the 351V out of the water. Like, like it's yes. the the light to the DMG yes. when it comes to Game Boys. Like, it's it's a new new generation. I love it. It's like the perfect size for a vertical. That's the best thing about it, I think. Mr. Taki Udon, first YouTuber to review and show off the Aya Neo Two. This thing is huge, packing the 6800U. Uh, he's showing off some Resident Evil here. And I mean, we've seen what the 6800U can do. It is a freaking beast. Uh, don't take my choppy frame rates here as reality because my bandwidth crams itself into oblivion when I'm recording this uh, show here. So don't worry about that. I'm just in a closed off room with no Wi-Fi. But I knew you too. It's a fancy good. little device. Yeah, like it's it. chonky and it looks comfy to hold. But that screen size, man, it might be too big. That's Steam Deck size. So, I think so. Without the, the bezels expensive. on the Steam Deck, that screen looks good. Just it does. Just worried about the price. Yeah, let's take a look at the price. So, Taki sends you to the IGG. I think price is all speculation still right now. Yeah, we're not quite ready for launch. I'm going to actually sign up for this. Just doxed myself. That's fine. Send me spam mail if you want. Uh, haul joysticks. It's going to be at least a thousand bucks. We may or may not end up trying this one out. We'll see. Um... Damien's talking to Ian Neo, and, and we'll see if we can get something together, if we, even if we can borrow one to show you guys. So, more to come. Let's celebrate a little bit. Our buddy Russ over at Retro Game Core. Dude, we are so proud of you, man. You passed 200,000 subs. That is insane. Uh, I remember when you started. It's funny because RH, the community, started the same day that Russ started his channel. Um, it was August, well, I believe August 9th, 2020. So same day we started this Discord and the whole thing, he started a YouTube channel. And uh, eventually we teamed up and did a podcast together. And then eventually he chose RH as his Discord home. So he's our he's our partner in there and we love supporting him and uh, just giving him a space to chat with his fans and auto post all of his videos and it's an awesome uh, discord.gg forward slash retro handles if you haven't been there uh hang out with russ talk to him congratulate him on 200,000 subs that's huge here he shows off a studio tour um which is really really neat you kind of get to see behind the scenes and he celebrates the 200,000 mark uh which is a big deal for youtubers you know it takes time to build these yeah. things 
It seems like it was not that long ago he just hit 100, but I know I don't remember exactly when that was, but it feels like he You're doubled right. real quick, and he deserves he it. It's His content's amazing. Yeah, I mean, he's just doing fantastic, and I know Taki's almost there too. So just these guys in the scene, it's just so cool seeing the retro scene grow and grow and grow like this. We really thought we'd be capped around... In our community, we thought we'd be capped around like maybe two, three thousand people total. Um, but over time, the whole scene keeps growing, and COVID has probably helped that. Um, the advancement of technology, and just um, and yeah, just personalities who are passionate about this this hobby, well, like yeah. Russ. I mean, all this stuff grows up in a place like that. I mean, we went. We're at, what, 17 and a half thousand people in the Discord server now? Yeah, which is crazy to talk about what? Retro gaming on emulation-based handhelds? I mean, that is so that is so cool. So, yeah. Proud of Russ. More to come. Uh, take a look at his video here. YouTube.com forward slash Retro Game Core. Talk to him in the Discord. Buy some merch. T has T Public merch. And they have sales like pretty much every weekend for like 20 to 30% off. So this shirt's super comfy. It's a canvas. Don't forget his charity store too. Oh, yes. On. Thank you. Yeah. A great way to support Russ and the charity of his choice, uh, which... Uh, Autoimmune Diseases Association? It's, yes. It supports go. Russ's there charity, the Autoimmune yep. Diseases Association. 50% of this sale will benefit the Autoimmune Association. That is really cool. And you're supporting russ and his wife and the things he does and you get an xp pick it up moving on other stuff we have the humble bundle melee mayhem bundle if you like this to punch is a mixed stuff, bag like there's a lot of like unrelated but kind of related mm -hmm. games on here it's kind of a cool kind of a cool mix dude chivalry is the ultimate land game with your buddies just chopping each other's arms off just laughing it's just it, it's like old times. Um, Mortal Lord Kombat Howe is one that a lot of my friends play. Which one? Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. Lord Howe. That's a really tough one. I heard. You get a lot for your what twenty three bucks. It's a good one. Chronicon. I don't know what that is. Song of Iron looks interesting. Nickelodeon All Star Brawl actually is a pretty decent fighting game. Uh, Mortal Kombat Eleven is awesome. And yeah, Chivalry is my favorite of this bundle. But for 23 bucks, that's a whole bunch of fighting games. Uh, that'll be fun. And if you want to pick that up, that is also in our uh, description below. That'll be supporting our charity, which is uh, Child's Play. And then... Ah! So I heard that everybody got let out of lockdown today. Um, they'll be back on the Discord... You might hear them saying things like, we're not in Montana, or we're not, we weren't bots. It's all lies. Um, thankfully, Jill Animal uh, was running laundry today. He brought me a fresh shirt, and he's a nice guy. Well, kind of nice. I once saw him kill a man in cold blood. He just leaned in close to his ear and whispered, the kindergartner sent You right there, buddy? What's, what's going on? Oh, man. I think... I think our little friend... I think our little friend hacked... Hacked us again. Oh, I always... Raven. I always get an interference, and it just... The, the pure blowback of the, the powerful hacking skills. Have, have your ears started bleeding yet? Um... No. Okay, that's, Not, that's always a good sign. Good. That's not not yet, not today. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, sorry about that, uh, Jade of the Bell. Let's talk about you. You make a little emulator called Fake 08, which is, of course, emulating Peak 08. But I mean, it's the best. Let's all be honest here. Well, um, thanks. It's it's just had a new release today. Bunch bunch right? of bug fixes. Yeah, because you have a new release today. And part of this new release is something huge for me, which is the fact that you've added a RetroArch core for Fake 08. Yeah. So awesome. in addition to standalone builds for the seven platforms, 
Um, also added uh, RetroArch cores uh, for the MiU Mini um, and for Android. Now the MiU Mini, we already have a standalone build for, but this should make it a little bit better integration with Onion, Onion OS. Um, oh, Mr. Where Jim Gray's you can... little OS. Yeah, so, so like right now, uh, or with the standalone build, like you turn off your BU Mini and it won't resume where you left off because there's no save state support. But in the LibRetro core, there is the beginnings of save state uh, support. Uh, as what? far as I know, it's working. It's it's what? relatively new, so it's what? possible there's bugs. But yeah, you can, so then on your BU Mini, you what? can close down and resume right where you left off, or you can save Scum Celeste if you really want to. But you shouldn't do that. You should play it. Regular. You should just enjoy it. You know what? <laughs> I mean, not using save states every five seconds. What kind of retro game emulator person are you? Come on. Yeah. Well, I'm not. I'm stoked for the Mew Mini and all that, but I'm really excited for the fact that you've included this on the Android version of RetroArch. So I've loaded yeah. on my 353V here, and um, you added some very helpful instructions. I tried to walk through it blind, and that is a mistake. There are a few steps you need to take. So when you go to the GitHub page, which is github.com forward slash j to the bell forward slash fake dash 08, the link's in our description. Um, just read the, uh, uh, there's a- The last well, paragraph guess, under usage has the instructions usage. for- Libra, uh, uh, right course. there. Yeah. Just added those. Um, hopefully Follow it will improve over time with more, with some, I'll probably add a wiki page with some screenshots to try to make it more clear. But it's also kind of tricky because Android is a Android is a it's lot a of things. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> you, um, you and I were going back and forth before airing tonight um, today that uh, I'm like, how help me? <laughs> I'm like, how do I make this work? And you're like, yeah. drop the dot info file. I'm like, RetroArch doesn't have dot info files, and apparently <laughs> it does. It tells the core yeah. if the behavior of the core and what it can and can't do which is part of why save states are a thing because that's one of the uh, variables in there, right? Yeah, the save states should work potentially without it. But uh, again, it, it's it's tricky too because RetroArch mm -hmm. is just a front end for uh, LibRetro cores. And so there right. is, there may be some versions of RetroArch or other front ends that you could use the core with that might need that info file. It's better to put it in. Um, Either way, if you run into problems, um, feel free to report them uh, on GitHub issues, um, and I'll do what I can to fix them because it's a it's a, a little here's bit a, of new ground for me too to to be doing Android and LibRetro cores. So here's one yeah. bug I found. Um, oh. I I can fix this when I rescale, but for some reason the menu will show off screen when I full when I full screen it when I stretch it. I'm a, so I'm a that stretcher. that game in particular it uses um, the 64 by 64 mode of Pico 8. Normally, Pico oh, 8's resolution it's a is game. 128 by 128. 128. So you've already played Ascent, okay? I haven't actually played it, but it's a it's a popular game. I know of it, um, and I know that it's a 64 by 64 game. It's a little Metroidvania. It's supposed to be really cool. Well, I've been meaning to play it. How do 64 by 64 games then, do they have some mode and make it compatible or do you have to write that into the emulator? So that's written into the emulator. It's okay. an option that Pico 8 has. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's a bug with the pause menu that the pause menu should be, it should be drawn on a separate surface or something to where it's independent of the resolution that the game is displayed at. But right now I'm just, just writing it to the same screen buffer. And so it gets cut off. Um, that's a known issue that this I need is... to get to sometime. Yeah, and you know, and you'll get to it. And in the meantime, I'm gonna enjoy the hell out of the version you already have out because this is awesome. You, people always say famously that Android has input lag issues, but not with this core, it doesn't. Man, it uh, it is super super responsive. And uh, yeah, so there's a 32 bit version if you've got a really old android device like i have a rp2 here it works great on the rp2 and this is the 64-bit um, core here most most newer android devices should use the 64-bit core but you will have to be aware of which one to sideload and you will have to sideload um, yes so you gotta yeah, yes. just drag it on there into your retroarch 64 or 32 folder 
um, into the chorus folder, and then there's the .info file you need to put somewhere. I still need to read the instructions for that part myself. But there, um, there should be a cores dire directory in your RetroArch. It's tricky because there's RetroArch files that like where your save states go, mm -hmm. and there's also some hidden files, and it's in the hidden place, which I have been having a hard time finding on one of my devices. Um, so anyway, gonna... I'm trying to work on those instructions better. But so here's... if you're if you're willing to be an early adopter, please do, right and please let me know what issues you run into, so we can work through it and make it better for everybody. I'm going to start using this daily now that it's in RetroArch. Like, that's what's sort of been holding me back from using any standalones is, like, I like having that one interface for everything when possible. And so you're going to hear from yeah. me, and I'll be bugging you and annoying you and be like, hey, man, <laughs> I found a thing. Can I show it to you? And then you'll be like, get the hell out of here. Chasing me out of town. <laughs> I may be like, okay, sounds good. I don't know when I'll get I'm to making, that. but I'm making dinner I... right now. Leave, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Stop calling my house phone. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I do plan to you know work through whatever issues there are, add even more platforms. Um, cool. To like, I think a lot of uh, platforms will make sense to do with the Lib Retro Core, and it, it should be pretty easy to add them going forward. So far, it's been relatively easy to well, do the the few that I've got so far. So well, having this plus save states, I, I mean, I might be in love. This is so I should shout out really that this cool. is in the README and the license file, but shout out to the PS4 P8 emulator. Um, I don't, it would have taken me a lot longer to implement save states to figure out how they work without really seeing that implementation first. So, yes, yeah, so there's somebody that made a, a Pico 8 emulator for PlayStation 4 for homebrew. Mm -hmm. Wow. And as far as I know, his is the first one that was Pico 8 with save states. And so, like I said at the beginning, there there are other good Pico 8 emulators out there. Mine is just one. And I'd like to think that it's, it's got a lot of the pieces that people want and it's accessible and things like that. But Oh, you're too modest. It's also this not... Is, no, this is the best. <laughs> this is the best Pico 8 emulator on Android, bar none. Yeah. I won't say on every other platform because you're right. There's there's the Windows version, which you should pay the $15 license fee and get the Windows version as well. Uh, but taking a step back... Or Mac, you don't, or Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Or Pi, yeah. right. Right, and... Uh, Please support Lexalawful, Zep. It's, Pico 8 is a great project. It is, and for people unaware, Pico 8 is a fantasy console. It's not a real console. It's a software-based console where sort of there's these... Um, you know, self-developed uh, indie games that are that are usually free, uh, either on itch.io or on Alexa Lawful, and they're just bite-sized games that are actually just a PNG file, if you can believe it, just a small uh, image file that runs code. And a lot of people run it directly in the browser, but you can load it into emulators and on retro handhelds as well. And it is just a blast to play some of these games. It's crazy. They've done demakes with, uh, like, Sonic, done demakes with... Um, Doom Celeste started out as a Pico 8 game, I believe, when they were demoing out. So, yeah. 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 Uh, if you want to know more, you could go check out that other time I was on the podcast with you and Thor a couple That's months right. ago. Or probably six months ago by now. I don't remember exactly when it was, but um, we go into a lot more detail about what Pico 8 is and how awesome it is there. Um, oh, one other piece of news I just remembered. Oh. Uh, Fake 08 is also now included in ArcOS. Um, what? If you don't, if you don't put, um, if you don't have a license for Pico 08 and drop in Pico 08, uh, yeah, the latest version of ArcOS uses Fake 08 as a fallback. And again, Christian, um, Christian recommends Haitian. that you get, uh huh. He, he and I talked about it. We basically said, yeah, he's going to still recommend that you buy the Pico 8 license because the P Pico 8 proper will run on all the devices that ArcOS runs on. And so hmm. there's, for the foreseeable future, maybe forever, there's going to be some incompatibilities. Um, it's not a perfect emulator. So if you really want the best experience, you should get Pico 8 and drop it in there. But you should. Yeah. if you just want to try a few out, uh, that's an option on ArcOS now too. Well, that's really fun. Um, so that's included as the default instead of Retro 08, which is the other Lib Retro Core. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I won't throw shade. That one works well for some some more basic games. This one just happens to 
Well, I mean, look at it. It works. I like that. Uh, with save Easy states... to set up is always important. Yes. It'll be... That's really we're cool. Trying. Yeah, we're trying to make it easier, too. Any other final thoughts, gentlemen? Vote blue. Oh, yes. Vote... Vote blue. Good God. <laughs> Vote blue. <laughs> Uh, like, comment, subscribe for your weekly recap of Retro News. Um, this has been Stubbs. It's Damien. And I'm Jade of the Bell. And this has been RH Weekly. Uh, take care of your handhelds, everybody, and each other. Bye.